Well, we are finally fucking here. We are finally here. Um, to say that nothing is sacred would just be, I mean, criminally uh, underestimating <laughs> how evil this fucking is. But there, there's just no kid, fictional or otherwise, these leftists will not touch. Um, the Rugrats were always queer icons. Any 90s kids or 80s kids, whatever, in the audience might remember Nickelodeon's Rugrats, a kid's show about babies. But here we have Chloe Stilwell uh, reminding us that they're gay or something. Uh, uh, okay, she writes, with Pride Month just around the corner, what's going on right now, and set to cover most cities in more glitter and gag balls than ever before to make up for what 2020 stole, we're naturally prepared for gay news to start seeping from corners of the, quote, culture that it doesn't normally reach. That was a weird run-on sentence. So, right out of the gate, we're talking about babies, like a show for babies, and uh, like half a sentence in, we already have a fetish reference. Like, what the fuck? Let me just double-check my uh, professional fucking audio here. Good. Um, yeah, so this is just disturbing as fuck, dude. Gag balls, uh, glitter, you know, gay news seeping. Dude, it's just... This culture is just so disgusting. <laughs> just even in the way they write about it. Still, I don't think we were primed for Rugrats to kick off the Pride Month trend. Details are finally trickling out from Nickelodeon on what will be a reboot of the iconic 90s cartoon for Paramount+. Plus. They're going to have a bunch of, like, woke gay stuff. Just like the Blue Clue, Blue's Clues where they were pushing, like, pedo and commie, like, black nationalist flags and LGBT flags and stuff like that. To the toddlers, to the youths. I mean, think of the, the audience that watches Blues, Clues, and Rugrats. We're talking, like, Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. type shit. Okay, let's... <laughs> fucking young. That's like toddlers, man. Okay? That's insane. The images alone of the familiar cast with a two-decade glow-up in animation, they look like shit, are enough to make any millennial wonder if they micro-dosed accidentally. Okay. So... They want to bring babies around, like, uh, queer icon, iconography, and hallucinogens? Uh, okay. But the news that Phil and Lil's mom, Betty, will be an openly gay... Openy? Openy? Openly gay character voiced by queer actor Natalie Morales in the reboot is the actual head trip we're applauding. So yeah, they want dykes raising your heads. Um, Morales told the AV Club, anyone who watched the original show may have had an inkling Betty was a member of the Alphabet Mafia. And they're not whistling Dixie. Um, they're in every corporation. They're in every kid's show. Yeah, Mafia. Like, that's not a joke. They gaslit us, you know, 20 years ago and counting about it being a joke, about us being crazy, you know. I thought so. I thought people that were calling it, like... A gay, gay mafia or a gay, you know, lobby. I thought they were jokers. But, once again, here we are. With the general reaction to Betty's outing news being, yeah, duh, it begs the question, weren't all of the Rugrats gay icons? There's been ruminating on the internet before about Angelica Pickles, top be billing villain of the show, being gay. Some have argued that her sass, confidence, and general joie de vivre from being a downright bia to babies makes her an obvious gold star lesbian. I'd like to say... I mean, I'm thunderstruck by this sort of content. Is this... This is humor in, like, lefty gay circles? Like, LGBT kind of circles now? Is pontificating about whether or not... Uh, Angelica, like, a kid character for kids, is gay. Um, bringing, like, a dyke character around kids. Bringing tranny kids characters around kids why 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 them in particular why what why people have like bizarre alternative sexual lifestyles like that to me that would just be like saying yeah let's just bring yeah let's intentionally go out of our way to bring like tie up people or like pee fetish people around kids yeah yeah to me that would be like saying like the rugrats were always kink icons like that I mean, this is basically what they're saying. That's what queer is. It's like a, it's like a fetish, basically. That's what trans is. It's auto gynophilia. It's you know what I mean. It's like auto. It's like fantasies of auto genital mutilation. Again, 
the obsession with bringing this around toddlers and, and, and around kids' entertainment is obvious Weinstein, Epstein-ass, like, casting couch creepazoid shit. Obviously. I mean... She continues. I'd like to say nay to that thought and said offer that Angelica was a different letter altogether in the mob. She is the sometimes bemoaned but essential A for ally. Aw, how cute. Let's see what this trailer's like. See how cringe it is. See how fucking gay it is. Nothing can keep us apart. Very gay. Very fake. Hold on to your bottles! Oh, this looks horrible. You. Well, that's gotta be all Pixar oh, looking. Gotta do. Whose idea was it to invent babies? Come on, guys! Oh. You dumb babies! Yikes, dude. I had a feeling it would end like this. would have told me before we started playing this dog monster. Oh, uh, Chucky's not there was funny. There's a dog monster in it. Dang, dude. It's the magical cave of fun stuff. Open egg face. That's not They're determined to make everything from your kidhood not funny and gay. I did it, and it was only a little terrible. He's a goner. They were so young. Rug rats. I think they've gotten better over time. <laughs> Streaming May 27. Yeah, don't stream that. That's terrible. Um, yeah, so this is just looking extra fake and gay and not funny. And a lot of the... <laughs> I mean, a lot of the old voice actors aren't there anymore. Like, Christine Cavanaugh died, the chick who voiced Chucky. I mean, she did Dexter's Laboratory and other stuff. I mean, she was pretty uh, in Oblina or whatever. She was uh, pretty pretty talented, but, you know. Oh, wow. Angelica's the straight girl at Pride who came with her queer friends but gets the most drunk. Angela, Talking about babies getting drunk and hanging out with sex perverts. Cool. Angelica's at the Pride Month but complaining because her feet hurt. Angelica's the one asking her queer friends if they would do, do her if she were gay and lamenting if they would do her. Again, this is like a character who's three years old marketed toward three-year-olds and this is the way leftists are paid to write about them i guess best friend and fellow ally Susie carmichael is always there to give her a stern no sis and she means it angelica is loud covered in glitter and called your dad a homophobe at bottomless brunch <laughs> it's like they're creating the kind of but side quip they're, they're creating the kind of person that doesn't exist prior to people like this getting paid to write editorials for Mike. These people, like, again, these types of people who would actually use the word homophobe, they didn't exist 10 to 20 years ago. They straight up didn't. Okay? They only existed in niche circles. Sometimes I wish I could be you so I could be friends with me, and if that's not a motto for problematic white allyship, I don't know what is. Man, this is just fucking just trash, man. The real, oh my god, the real lesbian icon of the show was Angelica's doll, Cynthia, no stranger already to queer memes. Cynthia has a chic, gender non-conforming quaff. Dude, they're projecting, this is how they project, like, gayness and transness and queerness onto kids, too. This is how they're doing it. This is how they determine that some kid who played with Barbie dolls needs to get chemically castrated. They see, look, oh, look, a doll has, like, a quaff, therefore it's gay. It's like... You creepy sex pervert creepazoids need to just stop with the kid grooming. It's just so brazen and so out in the open. <sighs> she never seems amused by anything and is a workout fanatic who smokes cigarettes. She will lay in the pool all day nursing one Michelob Ultra and get tanner than everyone while offering funny one-liners to every conversation without being too much. Cynthia is the queen of... I don't even care what that says because Frenchies are fags and anti-freedom. <laughs> That deserves a giant gay chef's kiss. No. No. No, dude. It's the babies of the show, though, that provide a more relatable tableau of queerness today. Queerness. Babies. Same sentence. Uh, 
Throughout the series, they were never strangers to dressing outside of their assigned genders and spoke to a sense of play and not giving a F that the LGBT culture of millennials and Gen Z is widely embraced and made more mainstream. Twins fill in... Oh my god, dude. They're trying to say that babies are trans and queer, dude. They're trying to genitally mutilate babies. They're trying to finish what they started with your foreskin. <clears throat> and we know who they are. Uh, I continue. Twins Phil and Lil's matching dresses alone belong in Pride-themed Urban Outfitters ad. And Tommy Pickle's staple diaper look is straight out of a Southern Queer Summer. Posted by a waterfall in muddy cutoffs, wondering if you're more of a raccoon or a possum kind of gay. Dude, they're... They're imagining the Rugrat babies all, like, greased up and gay, like, at a club. Like, they're sexualizing kids, like, like kids iconographic. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm thunderstruck right now. Very thunderstruck right now. <sighs> Chucky certainly fills the archetype of a quieter queer who is still always there to offer balance at the turnip, even if it makes him nervous. The Finster parents, Chaz and Kira, also have a vibe that seems out of an... They must have really... Like, I stopped watching the Rugrats in, like, the early 90s, right? Like, the newer stuff... I, I don't remember any of this crap, honestly. Did they since gay up the show and in introduce, like... <sighs> Chaz and Kira also have a vibe that seems out of a Nico Tortorella and Bethany C. Myers interview on queer polyamory. Oh, awesome, dude. They're joking, though. Like, this is... Jokes aside, I mean, this is, like, the idea of a left leftist making a joke. Like, to me, this is just somebody who's low-key just hinting that this is what they want out of society, but playing it off like a joke. Um, jokes aside, the prosperity of the 90s seemed to provide a backdrop for ambiguity that went under the radar in a different way than what we know now. Shows like Freaks and Geeks, Oy vey. Yeah, dude... Uh, Seth Rogen's character like goes out with a tranny, I think, in that one. Pete and Pete, my so-called life, spoke to a kind of unglossy weirdness that left room to fill in the blanks, and that was no different from the cartoons of the time. Not to say being gay was in any way easier in the 90s. I'd argue that every generation has queered up the world more and leaves it better for those coming behind them. Explain the suicide rate then. Um, explain the drug abuse rate. Explain the domestic violence rate. Explain the just general crime rate being higher amongst queers. I mean, you, you can't really explain that other than use, like, vague uh, references to homophobia, which are not scientifically sound. I mean, that doesn't explain anything. <sighs> but there, there wasn't so much triggering and canceling like there is today. The homophobia was in living rooms, not on Twitter. And while that's no better, it was certainly different. So that's good. To them, that's good. Triggering and canceling is a good thing. And they put it in quotes because they know that it's fake. They know that they're not actually offended by someone saying you know, the F-A-G word on Twitter. They just know how to identify ideological nonconformists that way, and they could physically remove them from the spaces that way. You know, so this is a political warfare. So yet another reason why progressives, or sorry, conservatives need to stop saying like, oh, progressives are the real homo, racophobo, xeno, queerophobes. You know, like they need to stop saying that because they're operating within the left's premises. The internet has given way to everyone being all and everyone else's subcultures and conservatives. Conservative outcry seems to follow every queer thing that happens in entertainment, even though LGBTQ blah, 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 representation is thankfully far more ubiquitous than it ever has been. It's like conservative outcry. It's like conservative outcry against you openly sexualizing kids, I guess. And they have the, you know, they have the luxury of being able to write shit like this to draw people like us out, I think. That's a part of why they do this. Like, again, in the previous paragraph, she's, like, celebrating this sort of stuff. Like, it's good to have triggering and canceling, which they know is fake because they're putting in quotes. They know they're operating in bad faith. They're telling you, they're telling you as much. <laughs> um... Something about the grunge and androgyny that leaked into the punk and fashion worlds allowed for an entertainment landscape in the 90s where we saw that more room for low-key interpretation. Yeah, I've always said, yeah, the punk rock stuff, even now, um, harbors the Antifa types, harbors the BLM types, harbors all that kind of stuff. All the violent, kid-diddly, arsonist kind of stuff that we've been seeing. It's built up 
uh, in the 90s punk and grunge resurgence or movement or whatever you want to call it. And uh, they've been subtly and not so subtly edging like fetishism and sexuality and weird shit into kids programs and now they're just brazenly doing it. They're brazenly just doing it. I mean, while considering the characters of Rugrats to be queer icons is a bit of tongue-in-cheek projection, which is what you fuckers do to your kids, which is why you shouldn't be adopting them or having them, the general sense of the show was that the children were more aware of their world and its perils than the parents around them and left to fend for themselves through that friendship and courage. That's a pretty damn queer outlook, and as Tommy Pickles says, a baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. Whew. That's just, you know... If only we had some sort of, I don't know, perhaps at times overzealous but benevolent leader who, I don't know, would open up some sort of anti-degeneracy department <laughs> and deal with stuff like this just right away. I mean, uh, Chloe Stilwell, you you need to like just you need to stop. You you not you, you shouldn't be allowed to do this kind of stuff. They should not be getting any sort of I mean I think I think these people should be canceled and deplatformed. But anyway, if you have a video request, hit me up at subscribestar.com slash the worst and uh, throw me the nine dollar tier and I'll cover any sort of uh, well, mostly any sort of video or article or thing that you want. Um, but anyway, until next time, subscribe yatch.